I'm very excited that once again I'll be visiting the Beale Chess Festival this summer as commentator and reporter. There are loads of events taking place over the two weeks of the festival for all levels of players, but the high point you could say of the festival is the Invitational Grandmaster Tournament. There are six players taking part in this double round robin tournament and it's a very colourful field. Let me introduce you to the players one by one. First of all, the number one seed, Maxime vachet lacave Still only 24 years old but very experienced. Not only is he just a brilliant chess player, classical chess player, but he's a rapid play and blitz specialist and that came in very handy in the tiebreak last year. He won tournament last year after a tiebreak. Let me show you just the finish of one of those games. So here, Vachier Lagrave, MVL as we like to call him, has the white pieces. Uh, looks as though black should be okay here. Equal pawns, uh, but look what happens. Basically white is far better coordinated than black. MVL makes it look so simple. There's a threat to play bishop takes pawn and then rook takes bishop. So Moisienka defends against that with f6, blocking the bishop. But then this move must have come as a complete shock. Bishop takes pawn. If rook takes bishop, then rook d7. The bishop can't move because of rook d8 check. So after bishop takes pawn, Moisienka played rook d8 and then bishop c5 wins material, for example, if rook takes rook, then bishop takes bishop check and king takes rook and it's all over. He makes it look so simple. Okay, next up we have Anish Giri. Anish Giri, well, the, the strongest junior in the world, uh, a really exciting prospect. Many people believe that he is going to be a future challenger for the world title. He's 20 years old. He's already well, highly experienced and, a, and an excellent technical player. Let me show you how he beat Peter Lecco from this position. Well, that says something itself, that he managed to outplay Lecco in a long technical game. Here, Giri has queen and knight and pawn against queen and two pawns. Still a long way to go, particularly as the king is somewhat exposed. There's no real pawn cover. But let's show you how Giri managed to finish the game. First of all, he marched his king up the board and it finds safety on this square. And suddenly queen h8 mate is threatened, so black's queen has to come back. Now, in order to make progress, you have to make sure that your own king is well protected. You can't just move the knight in here because there'll be a check and that could be very irritating. So first of all, Giri gets his queen in the right position. The king has to come up and now knight g5 is very powerful and here actually Leko resigned. Leko is in Tsugtsvang. You'll notice here that the queen is in the perfect position to stop black's queen checking on c4. Now, the problem that black has here is that the king can't move. Obviously, he can't move his pawns. If the queen moves away, then queen h7 will be mate. If the queen moves here, then knight f7 wins. So, it's Tsugtsvang. Black has to offer the exchange of queens, and then, well, there are, this is the simplest way to win. And then we move the king in. Black is forced back through Tsugtsvang, and then it'll be easy for the knight to come around to take this pawn, and it's all over. Very carefully played from Giri. Okay, next up in the Grandmaster Tournament, we have Pentala Hari Krishna from India. He won the Open Tournament in Beale last year, and that's how he's qualified for the Grandmaster Tournament. And I think it's great to see him playing in this closed tournament. He's a really exciting player. Let me show you this game that he played in the Czech Team Championship about six months ago. And here, well, White has a good position, but still needs to do some work. Uh, but Harry Krishna found Rook takes d6. 
this involves uh, well great piece of calculation first of all if rook takes rook then rook f7 check wins the queen now still a bit of work to do there but white should win so black played king takes rook and now Harry Krishna saw that he could draw the king up the board but this is a brilliant piece of calculation I mean there are other moves here but okay black played the king up now check the king comes across and now he spotted that queen f1 check is a winning move there are lots of tempting alternatives here but this is the best continuation now if the king goes to a5 then White plays this really ugly move, b4. It's ugly, but it does checkmate in two moves. So black had to put the knight in the way. And now the chase continues. Black has to block. And finally we get there. It's a very long variation. And here, black actually resigned. If the king comes across the d7, then queen d6 is mate. A brilliant piece of calculation. There were loads of other variations here that, that, there that uh, White had to calculate. Uh, but, yeah, brilliant play from Hare Krishna. Okay, moving on. We have Radoslav Wojtaszek from Poland. Now, Wojtaszek has been Anand second over the last few years. And that's really helped him from a theoretical point of view. And to my delight, he is a Nidorf player. And we can see that from this position here. Wojtaszek has the black pieces. Here, white made a mistake. He traded bishops. And now you can see that opens up the b-file. And, and black's play here was so logical. First of all, he switched his mage pieces to attacking on the b-file. Threatening a mate on b2, so that forces a pawn weakness. And now black has something to bite on. Okay, well, he castled here because he needs to bring this rook into the game. So having forced that pawn weakness on the queen side, he's able to switch to the c-file. It's all incredibly logical. So he switches queen and rook to the c-file, now here, if white brings the rook back to protect c2, then black would just rumble on with his attack on the queen side, and it's, well, it's very unpleasant for white to defend this. Instead, white tried to start some kind of counterattack on, on the king side, but after this move, white resigned. Excellent move, hitting the queen. If the queen takes the bishop, then well, the pins on the c-file, it's the end of the game. It's going to break through on c2. If the queen moves to the side, then you simply take on c1, and you take on b3, and, well, again, it's all over because of the pins on the c-file. Really logical game. I like that. OK, moving on, we have Alexander Motilev from Russia. Now, Motilev is an excellent technical player. He's became European champion earlier this year. Now, he hasn't been playing very much over the last few years because he's been a trainer for the Russian team. Well, that in itself says that uh, you know he's an excellent player. That, um, as I said, an excellent technical player. He's been also, as well as trainer for the Russian team, he's been the second of Sergei Karyakin. And you can see that in his play. You know, he, he plays endings incredibly well. Very good positional player. Let's see how he finished this game, played earlier in the year. Well, Motilev is a pawn up here. It's a winning position, but you still have to win it. Well, first of all, he started pressing against Black's king. Black took, and so he's starting to open up Black's king. But now he switched the knight over to the queen side. Looks strange, but let's see what his idea is. Of course, this forces the rook back. Ah, now he's been able to advance this pawn. Nothing to do with the queen side pawn majority, but in fact, it allows this rook 
to switch across to attack the king, and after this move, there is no decent defence to rook h4 and this typical laser beam checkmate, um, and black resigned here. So, Alexander Motilev, although rated slightly lower than the top three players in the tournament, well, I think he could be an outside bet to win the tournament as he's in such good form. Okay, moving on, we have the final player in the Grandmaster Tournament is Hu Yifan, the women's world champion from China. Now, she's a very exciting player. She's at her best and most confident when she's attacking. Let me show you this game she played against Anna Ushanina in European uh, Cup uh, for women. You can see that Hu Yifan has dragged Black's king up the board, but still needs to deliver the fatal blow. Here, she brought the bishop back to h3. The threat is to play bishop g2 and bishop f3 to checkmate the king. Good move. So Black moved the queen away. And now, well, there are several ways to win, but Hu Yifan found the cleanest, which was bishop g4, nice, nicely spotted, giving up the bishop, checking the king back, and that allows the king to come up the board, and there's no decent defence to g4 mate. For example, if g5, then it's still checkmate with the pawn. So, Hu Yifan makes up the fight, makes up the, the field, so a very exciting tournament in prospect. The tournament takes place from the 12th to the 25th of July. In fact, that's the, the whole Congress. Um, well, if you're around in Central Europe at the time, do join me there. And, well, it's going to be very exciting watching. And, uh, well, do play in one of the old tournaments as well. See you then.